This is about the liberal arts. The liberal arts of engineering is about turning engineers into full human beings by the age of 30 instead of by the age of 50, which is more usual. Uh, the liberal arts of business is about the sociology, the psychology, the political science, the anthropology of all business phenomena uh, that have for generations been distorted, hidden, and lied about by economics. The liberal arts of quality is about the fact that quality was an anti-Japanese management culture invented in Japan by Japanese to fix flaws in Japanese management culture. And that doing quality, therefore, would in America would require Americans to uh, diagnose the flaws in their management culture and implement an anti-American uh, culture to fix those flaws, which is not what they did. They took an anti-Japanese normal management culture and applied it in America half-heartedly. And guess what? <laughs> Didn't get anything. The liberal arts of design, creation, and invention is the courage to be simultaneously outside and beyond all, while the courage to be right in the center of all doing a show that amazes all. The liberal arts of innovation is about escaping the male struts, the gross exaggerations of novelty achieved uh, that uh, male leaders of organizations are involved in, fake innovation, innovation noise, I call it. And replacing that with <coughs> monastic reinvention uh, of the most quotidian and fundamental interfaces of life, where the highest leverage is. The liberal arts of management and leadership is about measuring the actual amount of directedness delivered to a workforce and a set of managers via current leadership, leadership regimes or current leaders where we discover that almost no directedness is delivered at all. And then tinkering and experimenting and inventing leadership regimes that actually deliver directedness to organizations. So we can stop having fake leaders and have real ones. Uh, the liberal arts of interfaces and intellectual tools is uh, imagining all of work and all of schooling. What would happen if it was done using interfaces less than 2,000 years old? Because right now, the way people meet, discuss, do classes, uh, do work processes, brainstorm, and uh, read and write is all based on 8,000-year-old, 2,000-year-old interfaces. What would happen if we based it on 20-year-old interfaces? The liberal arts of communicating and influencing has to do with the uh, immense, spectacular male hormone shows of communicating an influence, which is what we see today everywhere, to impress us. People looking like they're communicating and looking like they're persuading and influencing. And then the ineffective results they achieve or the evil, disastrous results they achieve. And the large salaries they get while they're faking innovation and faking communicating and faking influence. Uh, what would happen if you replaced fake communicating, i.e. messages that don't actually influence anyone else's views, and fake influencing, which means you get... Uh, you threaten someone into temporary compliance with something they hate. What, what happens when you replace that with genuine communication and influence? And what do they look like since they are obviously not done by the current uh, gigantic male hormone shows of self-importance? The liberal arts of culture. Cultures, selves, and high performances are exactly the same phenomenon, namely, large accumulations of heavily practiced routines. The routines are practiced so much that they're now entirely unconscious, we are not aware of them, and we're not aware that we have and use them. They're effortless to execute, we love them. It's like a, a you know, someone expert at some skill, a gunslinger who can manipulate their gun better than anybody else without thinking. We love ourselves, our cultures, and their high performances because they're effortless and unconscious and they make us look like geniuses. And we hate everybody else's because it makes us look like babies, because we haven't mastered and practiced that stuff. And almost everything you want to say about why there are giant errors in the world caused by culture comes from this view that I just gave. The liberal arts of systems thinking is there are 11 nonlinear system effects in Peter Singe's book, The Fifth Discipline, in the appendix at the back. That's all MIT found in 10, 10 20 years of work from Jay Forrester to Singe. Uh, but I found 256 by talking to real people, not academics, talking to real product development managers, and they found 256 system effects that affected them. 
And now I go to video game companies and I find less than 10 of those 256 nonlinear system effects are, are in video games. And if you want to make video games fun and training for reality and as surprising and amazing as reality, you need the other 245 uh, uh, system dynamics that are missing from all video games. Not only that, but there's this ecstatic flow point that gamers get when they are challenged to just enough to be operating beyond their comfort zone, but not challenged so much that they're overwhelmed. And you can uh, measure the amount of system effects that they face at one time and particular combinations of them that for particular kinds of users get them to that ecstatic flow point without overwhelming them. And then you can evolve them as they master different sets to face new sets and master them, face new sets. And for 15 years, you can develop a game and keep new forms of ecstatic flow in front of all the users. Of course, video game companies don't know this. They're not doing it. But the best ones, unconsciously by accident, are doing pieces of it. But I can do it systematically for three decades in a row with one game. Uh, the liberal arts of career. Uh, pardon me. Yeah, the liberal arts of career. Career is almost entirely unstudied. I mean, all the books on it, there are about 150 of them in English. All the books on it are really, really boring. They say nothing that we haven't all knew long before we read the books. Uh, and they all come from uh, uh, interviews with really bureaucratic, boring, ineffective middle managers in large corporations. Uh, if you want to, you know, dislike life and commit suicide, they're good things to read. Uh, the other 10,000 really weird parts of life and hard and strange environments to adapt yourself to that some people have managed to invent great careers for are all missing from the re all missing from the research literature. It's as if uh, business is the only career in the world. And then when you look at all the really interesting careers, they're much, much more interesting and adaptive and exciting. Um, the liberal arts of self-development and self-management. We have leaders, they call themselves, we call them leaders, out of the press calls them leaders. Uh, who don't lead anybody anywhere, but who do enrich themselves, for the most part. Uh, as James March at Stanford uh, researched, they take credit for luck, they avoid credit for bad luck. Uh, they make groups feel like they're going somewhere without actually requiring that they go somewhere. This is the collusive form of leadership that most people want and that most people get. They get it because they want it. The liberal arts of business is about noting that what happens if you get someone who actually can change themselves, who can lead themselves, who actually induce themselves to change? Well, they can actually induce other people to change, too. But people who have never induced themselves to change, who are internally simply suppressing out-of-control male hormone manias for status and wealth, uh, their lack of control internally and emotional maturity internally means they're not going to be able to help a corporation go anywhere. The liberal arts of social relationships. This is the discovery of recent brain science, social neuroscience, they call it, that most of the modules in our brain and the most recent modules are all for handling social, very particular social situations. Uh, and that our brain size is sized for handling groups of about 120 to 150. You think of Gore-Tex requiring that all facilities be 200 people or less. Uh, the fact that most of our organizations are bigger than that indicates that they are uh, immoral and corrupt and uh, incompetent, not necessarily because they choose men to be leaders, although that really helps, but also because uh, they're simply, the units are too big for people to care about other people in them and what happens. And that if we design systems for the kind of brains we have, guess what? <laughs> if they work better, 